You're listening to the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Radio's authority on the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology. Celebrating 25 years of broadcasting. Broadcasting around the world and to the great beyond. Listening to the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Radio's authority on the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology. Celebrating 25 years of broadcasting. Broadcasting around the world and to the great beyond. All hit radio. To the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome to the Exxon, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell, and for the next four hours, I am your host. I am your guide as together we cross the time-space continuum to this place that I call the Exxon. It's a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. It's a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. We come to you Monday through Friday from 8 p.m. Eastern until midnight from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. My email address is xzone at xzoneradiotv.com on all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV. And you can listen to the Exxon, like I said, from 8 p.m. until midnight, Monday through Friday, as well as the best of the Exxon broadcast, 24-7-365 at www.exxoneradiotv.com. And don't forget our new podcast site, exxonepodcast.com. My guest this hour, Exo Nation, is John. Uh, I'm sorry, is Josh Hurd. He is a paranormal author, lecturer, filmmaker, podcaster, and investigator. He has always been interested in the paranormal, and from a young age, has done his best to pursue the unknown. He has authored many books, which can be found on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. He also has a few documentaries, which can be found at www.realhouse.org. Josh is also a tour guide at the newly opened Malvern Manor, located in Malvern, Iowa. When taking a break from work, which I don't think is very often from what we just heard, uh, Josh really enjoys spending time with his wife and two daughters at their home in Iowa. Now, 
his website, www.joshherd.net. And Josh, welcome to the X-Zone. Hey, thank you so much for having me. All right, so what, what started you on this quest, this mission? The, you know, the, the walking through the forest with a big stick trying to figure out what the hell the unknown is. <laughs> no kidding, right? <laughs> um, I guess I've always been, you know, interested in the paranormal ever mm-hmm. since I was, ever since I can remember, really. And going to the library and, yeah. and getting uh, all the spooky books that I could. Um, but it wasn't until uh, I was about 12 or 13 years old, I lost an uncle who was very close to me. Um, and he was quite young when he died. Mm -hmm. Um, he was only 31 years old. Um, and so it was, it was fairly traumatic for the whole family in general. Um, but that's really, there were some strange occurrences that happened, um, kind of surrounding his death, uh, in the, in the few days following his death, there were some really weird things that happened. And that really got me like scratching my head and asking the bigger questions and really, trying to come to terms with the fact that something else is going on here that we don't quite necessarily know about. Um, and then obviously, you know, you start reading about, uh, ghosts and, uh, you know, paranormal investigations and all of that, uh, fun stuff. And then it just kind of takes you down this rabbit hole (laughs) and you just, uh, continue on. And it looks like, uh, one question leads to maybe 20 more. So <laughs> it's, it's a never ending circle. Yes, absolutely. Um, in your opinion, since you live in the state of Iowa, before we go to this uh, first commercial break, we have to take shortly. Sure. What is the most haunted location in the state of Iowa? You know, I got to tell you, just about 45 minutes away from where I'm at right now mm-hmm. is uh, the Velisca Axe Murder House. Um, and that's a fairly well-known location here in Iowa. Um, and I've been there, I, I believe six times now. Wow. Um, and it really never fails to, to disappoint. That's for sure. Um, there's definitely something otherworldly mm-hmm. going on there. God, I was getting shivers just listening to the name of the place. Yeah, it was, uh, a pretty horrific story. Um, back in the early 1900s, it was actually, the story that kind of took the the sinking of the Titanic off wow. the front page news and replaced it with this horrific story where um, eight people, um, six of which were very small children, mm-hmm. were killed uh, one night with an axe. I mean, just terrible. It's it's still unsolved to this day. All right, my friend, please stand by. You and I have to take a short break, Josh. Thanks so much for taking time out of your day to join us tonight here on the Exxon. Exo Nation, Josh Hurd is our guest, www.joshherd.net. That's www.joshherd.net. And we'll both be back on the other side of this break. Don't go away. Afterlife expert Roberta Grimes was the first one to say that dying can be fun. Now her best-selling book, The Fun of Dying, is available in stores worldwide. So if you wonder whether death ends life, how it feels to die, or what heaven might be like, The Fun of Dying was written for you. And if you have always been afraid of death, or if you worry that your life has no meaning, let The Fun of Dying ease your fears and bring new meaning to your life. Nothing said in The Fun of Dying is based on the teachings of any religion. Instead, Roberta draws on evidence to explain how death happens, how it feels, and what comes next. A lot of the best death-related evidence was produced in the first half of the 20th century. When it is put together with recent discoveries, it tells a consistent and amazing story. Roberta Grimes blogs and answers questions at robertagrimes.com. Her wonderful book, The Fun of Dying, is available on Amazon and at stores worldwide wherever books are sold. You're listening to the X-Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. While science pursues fact, magic accesses the quantum level, bridging random facts to form truth. As long as science and magic remain separate and polarized, the truth cannot be known. 
I'm Wilda Wiecka. Join me on the Science of Magic radio program dedicated to unification and evolution of consciousness. During each episode, I'll be speaking with experienced and respected scientists and mystics. From astrologers to astronomers, from medical doctors to shaman, the scientific method to dowsing and intuition, we will weave together information from seemingly divergent practices to promote unity and enlightenment. Join me, Wilda Wiecka, and the Science of Magic right here on the Exxon Broadcast Network. For more information, visit www.thescienceofmagic.net. Star began to demonstrate a metaphysical connection to the spirit world as a little girl. Her family noticed the connection, but it was a great-grandmother who told the family that Linnea was indeed gifted. The great-grandmother, who was also gifted, felt that Linnea had indeed inherited these attributes. It has been noticed that oftentimes, such things are passed down through the generations. Linnea was also born with a call, a thin white membrane across a newborn's face. Legend has it that if the baby is born with this call, the child will have second sight, or what we call psychic abilities. Linnea Starr does past, present, and future, and has the gift of prophecy. It is written within scriptures that if you were able to give factual information and prophecies indeed come true, the gift indeed comes from the divine realm. Linnea Starr does large interactive groups as well as private gatherings. For more information on Linnea Star or to contact Linnea for a one-on-one consultation, visit her website at www.linneastar.com. That's www.l-i-n-n-e-a-s-t-a-r.com. You're listening to the X Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Josh Hurd is our guest. His website is Josh Hurd. Dot net and uh, he is a paranormal investigator, author, author, filmmaker, podcaster, and a guy who likes looking to solve one major mystery that uh, many people, especially on this show, are trying to solve, and that's the unknown. Once again, his website is joshherd.net. Josh, uh, how many investigations have you done looking for that all elusive answer to the unknown? <laughs> I would say easily in the hundreds. I know that for a fact. Um, uh, it's it's a little ridiculous. I don't have a specific number, but it's easily in the hundreds. Are, you know, are we any closer to finding out what is the paranormal? I, I want to think yes, we are. Um, you know, we we're we're coming up constantly every day. It seems like uh, new pieces of technological advancements and things of that nature that we're trying to use to communicate with the other side. Um, Whether or not we're ever going to be able to definitively prove is, is beyond me. I think some of these things um, we, we may just simply not be, not be intended to know, you know? Um, I don't know. It's a tough question. (laughs) Tell us about the books you've written. You know, the first book that I ever wrote um, was more or less like a therapy session for me. Um, I, I never really had any intention of writing a book. Um, but, you know, after I uh, went to college, I uh, found some like-minded people um, who had similar interests as me. And, you know, we had watched like four episodes of the the series Ghost Hunters. And so, by God, we knew it all. <laughs> and... Uh, 
we ended up finding this haunted location that was actually a rundown chapel. And if you can imagine just an old barn looking structure, that's exactly what this is. Um, right. Built in the early 1900s, fell into disuse in the 50s. I mean, the place is literally falling apart now. Um, but we ran into something very dark and, and negative. Um, and it, it stuck with us. It stuck with us all. It was a very traumatic experience. And that's what I you know, wanted to get off my chest. Um, ultimately, just to try to educate people out there thinking, you know, this is all fun and games, which right. paranormal investigating is a blast. I love it. But at the same time, I do believe that there are some things out there that, that wish us, you know, ill intent there. So I, I think it's very important for people to get as educated as possible before just going out and more or less thrill seeking, you know. So why so would you that, say why would you say it's a blast? I absolutely love um, the rush that you get when you and it is very sporadic, obviously. Um, when you are communicating with somebody that you can't you can't see, you can't touch, and yet it's almost as if they want you to know that they're there. They want you to know their story. Um, that's the ultimate rush for me. What are some of the stories that those that you've been able to communicate with who you can't see have, have told you and your fellow investigators about? Um, one of the biggest ones that really hit home, I just recently, uh, well, I guess it's been four years now, but lost another uncle and it was the day of his funeral. Mm -hmm. Um, and we were all kind of sitting around, kind of heartbroken over here anyway. And my wife and I um, just decided to try, to, to try and reach out. Right. And uh, we ended up, what we believe, communicating with my uncle, my uncle Danny. And it, it was a beautiful thing and kind of spooky, but in a very cool way. <laughs> um, but yeah. That was that was one of my biggest and most memorable, anyway. Have you been ever attacked while you've been on one of your paranormal investigations? Has have you ever been mauled by a ghost? You know, I've I've been slapped, um, pushed, scratched. Um, one time in particular, in the in that old um, chapel that I was mentioning earlier. Mm -hmm. um, that was the the worst for me um was number one it, i i i describe it as like an open field tackle <laughs> like where you um I, I my feet were instantly out from under me and i lit flat on my back with my legs straight up in the air and i mean whatever it was was very strong um but that location um is 100% pure evil, <laughs> in my in my opinion, um, and that's why you know that's why I wrote the book, and that's why the the first documentary I ever filmed was basically retelling that book and taking that original team back to that location uh, to try to elicit some kind of a response while educating people. <laughs> So why is it you think that these entities, these spirits, these ghosts remain in the same place time after time after time after time? You would think and that if they wanted peace and quietness, the last thing they do is stay in a place with all these Ghostbusters tromping through. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and that's a, a very good question. Um, a lot of people, you know, the, the stereotypical unfinished business type scenario I could see. Mm -hmm. um, but then at the same time, um, like Malvern Manor, the, where I do tours and things like that, um, it was that, that place was their home. Um, it, you know, it, first it was a hotel and then it was a, then it was a uh, rest home. But then uh, later in its life, um, it was a more or less like a group home for the mentally disturbed. Um, and that's all. That's the only place they knew. Um, that was that was home for them. And I think, you know, a lot of good things happened there. Some bad things may have happened there. Right. Um, but that's that's familiar to them. So, what's I, the history behind Melvern Manor? 
Um, it's the history is really sketchy right now. It's we're still trying to piece everything together. We do know that um, it was originally built as a hotel, probably mm-hmm. the fourth structure built in the town of Malvern, Iowa, um, mainly for the the railroad that uh, went through town. Um, and like I said, then it uh, it was a, a nursing home for a while, and then it was that uh, kind of like a halfway house or a group home for the mentally uh, disturbed and challenged. Um, and it was closed in 2005 uh, for some very unfortunate circumstances dealing with uh, neglect and abuse. So if you can imagine some of the things that uh, may have been going on there, it's it's a little disturbing. So, um, Do you just investigate ghosts, hauntings, or what, what other aspects of the paranormal do you and your team actually go out and, and try to solve with that unknown factor? We are interested in damn near anything, (laughs) um, anything paranormal, um, that we can get our grubby little hands on. We, we would like to, uh, to entertain that. Um, one thing that I absolutely, it fascinates me more than anything Mm -hmm. is, uh, aliens and UFOs and things of that nature. However, they also scare the crap out of me. (laughs) So, um, so that's always a, a rush. But so yeah. so it, it, is it fair to say that ghosts give you a blast and aliens and UFOs <laughs> scare the crap out of you? There's no happy yes, medium here, exactly. is there? <laughs> I, that would be a very fair assessment. Let me ask right you there. this. Let me ask you this. You, you sound like a, a round, you know, well-rounded person, family oh, man. You. you know, you, you enjoy the thrill of the, the adrenaline rush of the paranormal. So why is it that Ghosts, you know, you have a blast doing that, but you're scared of aliens and UFOs. Like, at least you can see the alien and UFO. You can't see the damn ghost. Yeah, exactly. I think think what it is, um, is the whole idea of like an alien race coming to the the planet. and, and us not necessarily knowing their intent. Um, with, the, you know, with the paranormal and the ghost stuff and all of that, you know, for the most part, you, you, if you do your homework and your history, mm-hmm. you, you may know what you're getting yourself into right. or what you may want to avoid. Now, <laughs> the, uh, with the, uh, the aliens, uh-huh. we have no idea. We have no clue whatsoever. And it terrifies me. Let me I did ask a, you. Uh, let me ask you. Is I it did, the fact that yeah. you, you don't know where they're coming from or what their the, the agenda is, or is it the possibility of the good old anal probe that really scares the hell out of you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, I, I, exactly. You know, every time I go to I see would, my doctor and I see a pair of rubber gloves on his hand, I feel yeah, I, I'm fine, thanks, goodbye. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Oh my gosh! No, it, it's totally terrifying. I would yeah. love to to believe that uh, that they would be like Alf, you know, from Melmac, mm-hmm. and the only thing we have to do is hide our cats, you know. But uh, <laughs> or work for more. I think they yeah. may be a little more uh, malicious than that. You know, like throughout the years, you know, there have been so many cute, cuddly little aliens. You know, like like you just said, you had Alf, and then Robin Williams playing Mork. Uh, let yes. me see who else did. Well, you know, you had E.T. who gave everybody the finger and everybody loved that one. Um, and let me see, what else did we have? You know, there's been all these 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 fun-filled, warm and fuzzy alien pictures. And then you've got the War of the Worlds. Yes. Um, uh, Independence Day was a great one, too. Uh, yes. So, so who's giving us the mixed messages? Or is this just part of the entertainment genre trying to get the biggest buck? from every aspect of the audience that they can get. Yeah, I would love to think that it is an all in good fun uh-huh. type of thing. But then there's this little piece of me that also says you're being conditioned. You're being taught uh-huh. in some way shape or form that this is a general possibility yeah. that this could happen and you might find yourself in a Will Smith type position. <laughs> <laughs> but you know you know what you, I I you this is nothing new, this conditioning, if we want to look at it as conditioning. Exactly. Because when you look at the Bible 
and all the unsolved mysteries and the unknown in the Bible and how it yes. parallels a lot that is going on from Hollywood these days when it comes to the extraterrestrials, uh, you know, everything from near-death experiences to Ezekiel's wheel can be found in that book. Exactly. So, in your opinion, and I'm going to give you a couple of seconds to think this one over because I've got to take my news break. In your opinion, what part of the unknown does society play in its findings. Now, I'm just going to give you a couple of seconds to think that over, and we'll be back on the other side of this break as we continue here in the X Zone from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario. Wouldn't with Josh you love Heard. to know the Josh secret Heard. to everything? Josh is the website. Well, then, My name's Rob Dr. McConnell. We'll Kimberly be back McGeorge after the news. And her cutting edge breakthrough knowledge that combines science with possibility. Dr. Kimberly brings real life answers and healing to those open to alternative solutions. She teaches solution-based programs and classes that will change all areas of your life forever. Specializing in conscious creation, intuitive readings, and energy medicine, you can rapidly shift health, relationships, business, and money and abundance challenges quickly. Receive her best-selling book, Secret to Everything, at no cost by going to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone. That's right. Transformation can start now. Just go to secrettoeverything.com forward slash xzone and receive Dr. Kimberly's book for free. You're listening to the X Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Thomas Jefferson was a Burgess of 27 when he met Martha Whale Skelton, a 22-year-old widowed heiress who was fondly called Patty by her family. They were married on January the 1st, 1772, and they took up residence in a cabin on the building site on top of a Virginia mountain that Thomas had named Monticello. As Thomas and Patty slowly built their first version of the great house at Monticello, the Revolutionary War was heating up. Patty, with difficulty, bore five children, but only two girls survived. Thomas's political career developed to the point where he was often away from home, but after he authored and signed the Declaration of Independence in Philadelphia, he resolved never again to leave his wife. He was elected the governor of Virginia, just as that state became the revolution's last battleground. The Revolutionary War ended in 1781, and Thomas gladly retired altogether to my family, my farm, and my books. But Patty continued to want to bear her treasured husband a son, and late in the summer of 1782, she died of kidney failure at the age of 33, four months after having borne yet another girl. Thomas was so devastated by her death that he never remarried. He mourned her for the rest of his life, even as he helped to frame the peace in France and then became the first Secretary of State, the second Vice President, and the third President of the United States. This story is true. Thomas Jefferson was such an obsessive letter writer and record keeper that we know where he was and what he was doing nearly every day of his adult life. Every significant thing he says in My Thomas comes from his contemporary writings. My Thomas by Roberta Grimes is now available at Barnes & Noble, Costco, Target, Books A Million, Hudson Booksellers, Kmart, Walmart, Sam's Club, Walgreens, CVS, and online at Amazon.com. You can visit Roberta Grimes online at www.robertagrimes.com. <laughs> The scientist and the mystic have been on an age-old, relentless search with one thing in common. They seek truth. Their paths converge in the 40,000-year-old practice of shamanism, an ancient science delving to the quantum level of life, facilitating healing, manifestation, and evolution. I'm Gwilda Wiecka, the founder and director of Path Home Shamanic Arts School, a unique Colorado State certified occupational school training shamanic practitioners and teachers. We also provide classes for empowering personal lives through shamanism. 
Our certification classes are in week-long segments, enabling international participation, and online classes and long-distance shamanic healing sessions are available. Come discover the science of magic in the limitless world of shamanism. www.findyourpathhome.com Unwilling to be the government's deadly assassin, gifted psychic Kahara Mitchell went AWOL and ended up buried under rubble in the wake of a great tsunami. She regained consciousness far from Earth on the medical ship of a Dagaronian intergalactic fleet. Has she been rescued or abducted by aliens? The Chalice of Carrie, Kahira O'Donnell's latest paranormal science fiction romance, is the passionate story of an Earth woman and her destined mates, twin kings from another galaxy. Kahara uses her gifts fighting alongside Lords Rom and Ra in a war that will determine the destiny of galaxies. The Chalice of Kari by Kahira O'Donnell is now available at kahiraodonnell.com or at amazon.com. You're listening to the X-Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. What Happened in Benghazi is revealed by Nicholas Genix, author of Obama, Islam, and Benghazi. He informs the American people that President Obama deceived them by advocating a strong foreign policy prior to the 2012 presidential election, and Hillary Clinton supported this deception. As the title infers, there is a connection between Obama, Islam, and Benghazi. Ample evidence informs Americans that Obama's early indoctrination in the Quran developed an infinity for Islam, why the Quran is the source of discontent in many countries, and why the Obama foreign policy deception led to poor military action and caused the loss of American lives in Benghazi. Genix provides 36 questions for the Select Committee on Benghazi to validate if Americans are justified to mistrust President Obama and Hillary Clinton. An overview of Obama, Islam, and Benghazi is presented on the website www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. Annie Callahan, dedicated to negotiating a position for Earth within the Dagaronian Coalition, had trained for three years to become an Earth ambassador. Yet, the very eve of her arrival at the capital ruling planet, she is claimed as destined mate to an oversized, mating maddened vamp who swears he will never release her. Lord Astaran, king of the Macian sector, has waited over 900 years for his destined mate, Having found her as an alpha vamp, he is unable to relinquish Annie, virtually holding her hostage until he can claim her. Yet Macians cannot survive without their mate's love. How could he strip her of her citizenship, her ambassadorship, and her freedom and expect to win her heart? With All That I Am by Kahira O'Donnell is the latest book in this exciting series, The Daggeronian Chronicles, guaranteed to keep readers coming back for more. With All That I Am by Kahira O'Donnell is available on Amazon.com and KahiraO'Donnell.com. You're listening to the X-Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. X-Zone Nation, Josh Hurd is our guest this hour, www.joshherd.net. So, Josh, in, in your opinion, what role has the Bible played or any other religious ph philosophical book when it comes to our interest, our quest to discovering 
the mysteries behind the paranormal? You know, I think you said it best, too, when we were talking about the Bible earlier. You know, there's all of these little clues and hints and mm-hmm. things of that nature. I mean, Christianity itself is very, very paranormal in nature anyway. Yeah. Um, I mean, I just, I literally just released a book uh, just a few months back uh, called Ghosts and the Bible. Um very specifically talking about certain things like that. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's really crazy to me how, <laughs> and I say this all the time, you know, Christians are some of the first people to dismiss the paranormal where their entire belief structure is based on the paranormal. It's, it's a little, exactly. I don't know. It's a little weird. <laughs> it, it's true because, you know, here you've got, the cloud that went to the top of the mountain where Moses received the Ten Commandments exactly. that were written in stone. Exactly. And the list goes on and on and on. Do you think that there was an alien presence one time during our vast history? I would honestly say yes. At some point, there was some form of influence there, mm-hmm. whether that's technologically or, or otherwise, I would definitely suggest that there was something, some form of influence somewhere. Why do you think so many believe that the governments of the world are suppressing the information and are actually perpetrating a truth embargo when it comes to the extraterrestrial existence and presence? I would say that it's it's good for business for them anyway, especially to have a, a populace of people that are completely enthralled mm-hmm. with their iPhones and their Netflix and, and things <laughs> of that nature. You know what I mean? Like the dumber you are, the better in their opinion. It's, it's, you know, we want you naive as possible. Um, and so, yeah, we look at these alien stories. Um, and if you ever hear it on, on, uh, a, a news broadcast or anything like that. It's yeah. very tongue in cheek. It's mm-hmm. very tongue in cheek, um, which irritates the hell out of me. It really does, but uh, it is what it is. So I don't know if we're ever going to have that definitive proof uh, that will sway the masses, you know, to to believing that there are that there are actually aliens out there until they just land on the planet and be like, here we are. <laughs> that would be an interesting question for Donald Trump. Will he would he yeah. build a wall to stop the aliens from outer space from coming into the United States? <laughs> He's just going to put us in a bubble. <laughs> that, there you go. That, well, you know what? That's not a bad idea because that would take care of climate control. Yeah, exactly. You know, there's a lot of positives exactly. with that. <laughs> Love it. Um <laughs> I believe that the you know that it seems that ever since the the internet has really caught on, and I'm going back to the uh, let's see the beginning of the '90s yes. where it really caught on. You know, UFO, Bigfoot, Sasquatch, the uh, Loch Ness monster, the Bermuda Triangle, and all these all these topics have really caught on. Mind you, I I am I'm the first one to say that I believe the the internet is the largest septic tank ever built by man because it has yes. <laughs> more crap in it than it has anything else. And yes. when you look at a lot of these different UFO organizations, uh, you know, ghost hunting organizations and so on, it seems that they are a group amongst their own. Like, it reminds me of the CB clubs of the, of the, of the 60s. No, everybody would have a CB radio in their, in their car and... They'd call each sure. other on the radio, even though they were in the same parking lot, parked at the same coffee shop. <laughs> right. It, it looks like the same thing. Is this just a, a change in society? We went from CB radios to uh, to uh, handheld devices. I would uh, I would say yes, honestly. Um, if you if you look at it now, you know the the paranormal genre, just in general and broad strokes, has has been thrust into the mainstream here yeah. just in the past decade to 12 years or mm-hmm. so. Um, and it's really become something that you, um, we can talk about around the water cooler at work. You know, it's <laughs> whereas, you know, 30, 40 years ago, we may be committed for saying such things, mm-hmm. but, you know, here we are. Um, and having an open conversation about things like that, um, it's, it's amazing to me. 
but at the same time, you know, it, it leaves room and it leaves the doors open for so many, I, I guess charlatans might be the right word to use, yeah. um, things of that nature. So it's, it's a good thing and a, and a toxic thing at the same time. Speaking about charlatans, what's your take on the so-called reality TV shows? Um, I've met a few of those guys, um, and who I've met and all that stuff, you know, they're, they're a really cool people, um, and very down to earth. And I think, mm-hmm. I think their hearts are in the right place. Yeah. And I think they really want to get down to, to the hard answers of these. However, I think the networks, you know, it's, they're filming at these locations for three, four days. Um, and then they compress it down to a 40 minute show. That's yeah. tough. Um, and there's always, you know, there's always a product to sell exactly. um, at the same time. And I think that really takes away from, from the passion of the field itself too. Marketing, marketing, marketing. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, especially All when these, the green. <laughs> especially when these guys, when they sign a board, uh, any project, they have to sign a talent agreement, which basically says that the producers own them. And yes. they have to do what the producers want because the producers have to do what the networks want. Exactly. They're going to tell you exactly how to speak yeah. and what to say. <laughs> yeah. I, I often wonder how those shows would look if they were really done without the night vision because I've never seen any ghost appear on Night Shot. You, you know, and that was my thinking too. We did, um, when I did my first documentary, A Brush mm-hmm. with Evil, right. we, um, we shot the, the ghost hunting scenes in infrared, you know, in those IR shots. Yeah. Now, I went and we just got done filming the sequel uh, for it. And everything that we did, I just did low light. Right. So no IR whatsoever. I wanted to step away from that too because I had the exact same thought process as you. I'm like I've never seen a damn thing like on IR. So what are we yeah. doing? <laughs> what's your What's your take on EVPs? Oh my gosh, um, there are some really cool EVPs out there. Um, even some that I've captured myself. Um, um, you so, sounded yeah, surprised. I carry a, a digital recorder yeah. with me, things like that. Um, you know, some of the uh, some of the ITC type uh, devices that are out there, like the Spirit Box and things like that, mm-hmm. that are sweeping radio channels. I think there's a lot of room for error yeah. in those, um, because I mean, think of how many hundreds of radio stations you could be possibly sure. picking up. I mean, there's just so much room for question there. Yeah, and there's a lot of cross cross channeling done as well. Very um, much. So. Uh, you know the what's it called a, a spirit sound box that is basically a frequency sweeper. Yes. You know it's like the old Bearcat scanners that the yep. uh, that Radio Shack used to sell. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly it. You know, a lot of cross channel on that, and uh, back in the day, the guys at the coffee shop in their cars listening to their CBs on either <laughs> sideband or single sideband would call that a skip. Yes. Yeah, and of course, uh, radio frequency interference and cross radio frequency uh, uh, chatter depends a lot on atmospheric conditions. Oh yeah, yeah. easily. Atmospheric conditions, even just your general position, sure. you know, it's, everything ties in. Um, and like I said, there's just so much room for error yeah. at that point in time that you just can't necessarily rely on that as a as concrete evidence, you know. How many people go out and do an investigation with you, John? Josh, I'm sorry. Um, usually... Um, Usually it's just me and four buddies that I've known since college um, that usually go out with me. Now, every once in a while we do events and things like that mm-hmm. where we invite people, uh, you know, to come with us. And, and we have a great time, you know. We sit around and talk shop and then right. go and investigate and, and wrap it up and talk shop some more. So. <laughs> do you ever bring a psychic or a medium with you? Um, I have before. Mm-hmm. Um and I've met a few, a few psychics that have absolutely just knocked my socks off. Um, I'm very careful as to the information I give yeah. them, um, especially when it comes to you know just personal stuff because I'm afraid they're cold reading me. Mm-hmm. Um, but 
So I've always been very leery about that. And, you know, a lot of people claim that they're psychic, which is awesome. I totally believe that the phenomenon exists. I just think, you know, it, it, all the aspects of the paranormal, that is the one that would host the most charlatans. What do you say to these people who... Let me see how I can best describe this. I'll give you an example. I had a gentleman on the show last week who told me that um, he is part of a galactic fighting force huh. and that his main battleship, Starship, is just on the other side of Pluto. It keeps hidden from Earth. Um, the UFO houses 500,000 souls. The minority of souls are, are humans. And huh. that he has a daughter on the other side of the Pleiades on a planet there. Wow. I, I oh, that's a lot to take. <laughs> um, now, now I'll just leave you chew through that for a second and I'll tell yeah. you about a, a young lady I had on the show last week who said that, uh, you know, uh, Moses has appeared to her who is really an alien uh, and that he drops in and sees her all the time. Uh, he's, he, sometimes Moses brings Jesus along with him. Um, and uh, then there was the lady who does psychic surgery with the extraterrestrials in another dimension. Psychic surgery? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, did, I did not I say psychosurgery. I said yeah. psychic surgery. <laughs> I don't... Uh... I don't know if I could necessarily buy into any of it, really, just because I'm, I'm more of the person that has to see it, touch it, feel, you know, and, and experience it for myself to really hop on board with, yeah. with an idea. So, so you're, so you're, 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 a, you're a normal person. I would hope yeah. so. I because, feel, you know, I feel like I'm slipping at times. No, 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 <laughs> no I, I believe that you've got a, a built in, uh, checking system that won't won't let you go over that board hell yeah. you don't want to get anal probed by an alien so you, you've got to be <laughs> <Exactly>. all there <laughs> um you know it's it's rather hard for anyone trying to come into this uh i was going to call it an industry but you're a nice guy so i don't want to be insulting into no, this it, genre it is what it in, is. In, into this <laughs> genre okay with all these luna loony bins out there you know, and I ask one simple question. All I want is one simple thing in life. I'm not a complicated guy. I'm a very simple life. I believe that life is simple. We complicate the hell out of it. Yes, we do. So when people say, Rob, what will it take for you to become a believer? One simple word, proof. Exactly, proof. And that's, that's the biggest thing mm -hmm. and the hardest thing at the same time. I always say this. I'm like... You know, this this paranormal field or whatever that we're in, it's it's almost like a bad location joke. You know, when somebody's telling a joke and yep. they're like, oh, you just had to be there. <laughs> well, it's, it's the same damn thing because it's like, oh, this this amazing EVP came across or whatever. Or, oh, you just had to be there. Yeah. You know, you had to see it for yourself. It, it's all of that. And that's why I, I honestly I feel sometimes that we're never going to have this this proof yeah. because we can't necessarily prove it to to like the hardcore skeptics out there but it's not even to the hardcore skeptics to the person who's able to add one and one and come out with two exactly <laughs> you, know, you know it's yes. not a hard thing and when you challenge some people like i do mm -hmm. they get upset with me well i don't think they should be upset in any way i mean like you said all all you want yeah. is proof that's it I mean, hey. and you're getting very outlandish claims with like those past guests that you were discussing. Yeah. I mean, those are very hard pills to swallow. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you when they were some of the better, these, they were some of the, of the sanest ones. We've got yeah. about two minutes before I've got to go to my break. So I'll, I'll share this one with you. This is a final antidote for tonight. Mm -hmm. I had this guy from someplace in Alberta, which is one of our prairie provinces here in Canada. It's either wheat sure. or cattle. And he said, well, I used to get visited all the time by, by UFOs. He said, but I took care of them. I said, well, what did you do? Well, I went down to Canadian Tire, you see, 
and I got myself a big car battery, some wire, and a red light. And he said, I connected that red light to the battery, and I ain't seen any aliens anymore. Neither has any of my neighbors. <laughs> so I said to him, I said, well, did any of the neighbors ever see the aliens before you put the red light to the battery? And he says, damn it, I never asked. Oh. <laughs> And that's a true story. Wow. And, that, and that's I a love true it. story. <laughs> I want to believe. I want to I believe. Too. But all I want to see is the proof. And when it comes to Roswell, New Mexico, you know that famous crash? Yeah. The biggest, the biggest problem I have with it is something that Stanton Friedman really gets mad at me about. <laughs> is because I said, all right, so you've got Jesse Marcel was dispatched out to Brazel's farm. He picks up all this debris, puts it in his Jeep, and what does he do instead of going back to the air base to maintain and the chain of custody? He goes Why? home. He goes home and lets his wife and kids play with it. Exactly. Right then and there, I believe the story dies. Exactly. The story dies. Yup. That's exactly it. Yeah. Listen, young man, you and I have to take a break. We're going to be back in about two minutes. Thanks very much for joining us again, Josh. Thank Ex you. Exonation, our guest is Josh Hurd. His website is www.joshherd.net. That's J O S H H E A R D.net. And we'll both be back on the other side of this break as we continue here in the Exon from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. You can always send an email, exxon at exxonradiotv.com on all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV. You can watch past episodes from season one of the Exxon TV show at exxontv.com. And of course, the radio website where you can listen to the Exxon 24-7, 365, as well as the nightly broadcast, www.exxonradiotv.com. My name's Rob McConnell. Josh and I will be back on the other side of this break. Don't go away. Little children aren't the only ones afraid of the dark. Millions of soldiers return from war zones with PTSD, anger, frustration, fear, and loneliness, much of which surfaces during the darkness of the night. You have the chance to change the lives of these American heroes. Songs and Stories for Soldiers.us provides free MP3 players for these men and women. With a list of 3 million songs in 16 different styles, 100,000 audiobooks, and 30,000 old-time radio programs, every veteran can find something to soothe and comfort them at no cost. All our players contain an 8-hour audio program designed to help veterans fall asleep. With 1,500 plus vets now participating, it's our goal to deliver 10,000 audio players this year. Go to our website at Songs and Stories for Soldiers. Soldiers.us. Help us help a veteran make it through the night. I am Dr. Carl O'Helvey, founder, president of a new cancer foundation focusing on evidence based physical, mental, and spiritual interventions, including natural cancer cures, prayer, meditation affirmations, nutrition, and other related holistic cancer prevention and cure modalities. These are used in cancer education, research, and financing care. I ask for your help to continue this important work by donating at www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. You're listening to the X-Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. If you enjoy reading a good mystery with a touch of the paranormal, then you'll love From Out of the Woodwork by William S. Peckham. Sean Kennedy, a Toronto contractor, buys derelict houses, guts them, and turns them into multifamily dwellings. When Sean buys 29 Livery Lane, a century house in ruins, and starts the renovation, the house fights back. He is visited by ghosts of owner's past. His visions are triggered by touching an oak mantle, reading a faded letter, opening an old locket, or opening a brand new casket in the basement. 
These visions will take you on a trip across southern Ontario from Niagara Falls to Toronto to Kingston. From Out of the Woodwork is now available in paperback and on your favorite electronic reader. To order your copy of From Out of the Woodwork, go to www.williamspeckham.com. That's www.williamspeckham.com. You're listening to the X-Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Well, Josh Hurd is my guest this hour, X-Zone Nation, www.joshherd.net. First of all, Josh, thanks very much for joining us. Great talking to you. Uh, what do you have coming up for yourself and your group as well as the tours? Yeah, as far as what uh, we have going on, we have uh, A Brush with Evil Part 2 coming out mm -hmm. uh, in July. And then come fall, I would like to start a, start a tour, like a film tour. So... I have no idea where we're going yet. <laughs> what would you What would you like to share with the listening audience tonight, Josh, who may be anticipating or thinking about becoming a paranormal investigator like yourself? What words of wisdom do you have? I mean, besides don't. Um, I would say the the most important thing is education. If you're really considering this um, as a even as a hobby. Um, I would I would get with somebody who has been around the block a time or five, um, pick up some books. You know, um, there's zillions of really good books out there. I mean, and read all of the the classics. You know, the Hans Holzer oh, yeah. and, and things like that. Um, really get into that stuff. Um, study, study uh, parapsychology. You know, things of that nature. So. Yeah, and, and for those of you listening who are not familiar with something called a book. You can find them in something called a library. Yeah. Remember the good old days when people would actually look forward when they're walking instead of, you know, texting? Yes. <laughs> yes. There, there, was a cute, there was a cute cartoon that somebody had on the internet. It was this spaceship had landed in the middle of New York City. The aliens are standing out you know, their UFO is above. They're standing below their UFO trying to shake people's hands, and people are just walking by texting. <laughs> and I think that is, would totally happen. <laughs> oh, my oh, oh my goodness. Um, for people who'd like to get more information on the um, Mel, uh, Melbourne Manor, is that information on your website? Yeah, um, you can go to uh, joshherd.net, has mm -hmm. some stuff on there. Um, also... Uh, malvernmanor.weebly.com uh, is the main site. It's got a calendar on there. Um, you can request a date, and uh, it emails me directly, and usually within 10 to 15 minutes, I'll get back to you. So it's a pretty quick turnaround. All right, and for those of you who are listening and who don't have the common sense of understanding what Josh said when he said you could go to that website and request a date. No, we're not talking about the two-legged ones. We're talking about the <laughs> dates of the tours. Yes. <laughs> Overnight investigation. You, well, wait a second. Say <laughs> yeah, that again. <laughs> that doesn't sound any better. <laughs> Josh, great talking to you. Regards to your fellow uh, buddy, your four other buddies and to your family and love to have you back on in the future. Sounds great. Thank you so much. You take care of yourself and keep hunting. All right. You too. Good night now. Exo Nation, my guest this hour has been Josh Hurd. His website is www.joshherd.net. That's www.joshherd.net. Great guy. I'm going to have to get him back on and learn more about his documentaries and talk more about his books. By the way, his books are available at Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. I'll be back on the other side of this break as we continue here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Send me an email. I love getting your comments. X-Zone at xzoneradiotv.com on all social media sites. X-Zone Radio TV. And you can listen to the X-Zone 724-365 www.xzoneradiotv.com 
This is a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard, and I'll be heard on the other side of this break as we continue from our broadcast center here in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. <laughs> 